Um, welcome and thanks, Abair, to the opportunity to speak today, this afternoon. And I hope this talk will give you a small snapshot on what's happening on our farm. Um, I'm from Western Australia, and um, you guys over here are three hours ahead of us. In the last four weeks, we've had 252.6 millimetres of rain. So that's called a, caused a spraying, not a problem, but pretty early mornings. So this morning when my alarm went off at 6am Canberra time, which was 3am WA time, I didn't have any problem getting up because I've been doing this for the last four weeks in the boom spray. So where there's a positive, there's a negative, and a negative, a positive, so to speak. So my title of my uh, talk today is about the Land Cruiser Ute, which now has wheels. You probably think it's a little bit obscure, but hopefully by the end of the talk you'll understand what I'm trying to say. So, for those that don't know me, I'm Darren Lee, family farm operation in the bustling metropolis of Minnanu, centre of the universe, 400 people, 40 growers, but we probably kick a little bit above our weight. We took something like uh, over 600,000 tonne into our local CBH bin this year. It's a big bin and a lot of guys pull from the eastern line, but it's actually the largest inland receival point in the southern hemisphere that isn't a port. So whilst we might be small in numbers, we like to think we're a little bit tall in stature. Um, as Tiggy said, I'm, I farm 17 kilometres northeast of Mininu on the Red Loam. Good, honest country. Six and a half thousand hectares, a mixed farming operation of wheat, barley, canola, lupins, oats, and about three and a half thousand sheep. My background: I'm a country boy, originally from Northam, but actually married a farmer's daughter. I uh, bro have four brother-in-laws and um, I started in 1998 farming, so this is my 20th year of farming. Prior to that, I actually worked for National Australia Bank as an agribusiness manager. So um, it's been a massive transformation and a massive change, but I absolutely thoroughly enjoy it. So the key to digital agriculture. Originally, how I got into this, I look back on with a little bit of trepidation, but we got into drones. Um, let's just say, pretty much say, gravity sorted that out. They're great for plot work, but they're absolute crap for broad acre. Um, we had a number of drones, one that's lasted for seven minutes, ones are up for 15, up for 50 minutes. Um, and I eventually ended up with this thing called an Evo 8000, Cost about 25 grand, did 90 kilometres an hour. We even had it out 16 kilometres in distance. Cass, I hope you're not leaving. It was outside of my sight, but anyway. It was up in the air for 50 minutes. It did all the good things, but it had a mind of its own. And we were doing this four and five years ago. Um, and when it doesn't want to come down, fail safe number one, fail safe number two, fail safe number three, and fail safe number four is turn it off. 25 grand into the ground, multi-spectrum camera, you name it. So, a value proposition. Drones is probably not a good idea, broad acre, and it pushed me into real-time sensing. So, you need a value proposition. You need to maximise your profit, minimise expenses, save time, better and effective management. And then I come to the important part about connectivity. Without connectivity, it doesn't enable us the use of current digital technologies. There might be MQTT technologies, LoRa technologies, but the bulk of it, we really do need connectivity. It's like having a Land Cruiser in the Ute, in Land Cruiser in the Ute, a Land Cruiser in the shed. Great Utes, Toyota, thanks. If it doesn't have any wheels, you can't drive it anywhere. If you've got all the tools in the shed and someone's locked the door, you can't get a screwdriver, you can't get a spanner, you can't use those tools. So for me, connectivity is a really, really important thing. And the other one, I love this word, intraoperability. The ability for technology systems and software applications to communicate, exchange, collect data from other, cross each other. So whether you've got Hardy, John Deere, New Holland, who names it, but they need to talk to each other. We need intraoperability across all sources. So for me, it's adding precision to my decisions. And decisions. As a grower, um, it's decisions, decisions, decisions. It's 
pretty complicated little tablet, but machinery decisions, staff decisions, harvesting decisions, spraying decisions. Um, the weather changes and all those decisions change again. Um, how do we make good decisions? We've got lots of things going on and one of my big value propositions in this whole process was try and get rid of duplication of process. How many times do we put something in an elders or a landmark notebook, put it in our pocket and spend hours and hours in the office transposing information? Does my head in. Um, so if I can seamlessly collect that data, good quality information in, good quality information out, it makes my life a lot more enjoyable. I hate transporting information. So my aim is to go pretty much a paperless farm in some respect. The problem that we've got is at the moment it all comes into the internet or we have an iCloud for this, an iCloud for that. How many passwords do we have? Ah, oh, passwords, do my head in. I must send a record, I reckon, for sending myself my own emails to re whatever you do. And then when you use the bloody password, sorry, you've used that one, try again. You use an uppercase, a lowercase, a bloody symbol. So my aim was to try and streamline some things and get the digital lag all in one place. Um, you have connectivity that works sometimes. You had connectivity that didn't work at all. Um, you had a network of iPhones, iPads, Apex, Hardy, John Deere. You had 50 files, an absolute bloody library of information that you could never get access to. So, the solution. Our own Wi-Fi network. Everything linking to a common source. I want one file. Bly Lee Farms 2017, whether it be sheep, whether it be planting, whether it be harvested, it's all in one file, one password, one source. And but at the end of the day, I'm just a silly cocky with a few ideas. They might be good ideas, they might be absolutely terrible ideas. But how do you link up with people that know what they're talking about and can implement your ideas? And for me, it's about having transparent partnerships and dealing with people that you trust. They want to make a dollar, but I also want to make a dollar. So I was extremely fortunate when our paths crossed a woman called Annie Brox from Origo Agriculture. Now Annie had a lot to do with Telnor in Norway. She's a Norwegian woman who lives now in Perth in WA. So she knows all about internet and interoperabilities and all the things that I don't know about, but has not a lot of ag experience. So we work well together. Um, she also set up Wi-Fi networks for the United Nations in the remotest parts of Africa and set them up in Norway. With, we've got, we, we don't have mountains in Minanu. We have little corrugations on the road. So if she can do stuff in Africa and Norway, Minanu is a piece of, flat piece of pizza, pretty good. So what have we done with that? I actually have ownership of all my data from my server. I can allow my agronomist, my machinery dealers to access to my own virtual private network. Um, the paddock stations report in, the cedars, the sprays, the headers, all our vehicles all link into my network. So what is my network? A little line, I don't know if we're going to get it here, or the, that goes where it says high speed internet, what I've done I've linked into Telstra's ADSL plus two. Might be a little bit old school. And it's not the NBN, but in all honesty, NBN can't even find me on my map. And that's like giving you a Ferrari and saying, here, here's 500 mils of fuel. Keep going for a month. Doesn't work. So we have our own farm server based at the farm. We have cameras linked to that for security. I can go away and keep an eye on my 50,000 litres of fuel on the farm. I can monitor tanks, I can turn taps on, taps off. I know what my machines are doing when we're operating. And it's all via this, I love this word, high speed internet link. And the best part about it is we don't pay $250 a month for six gigabytes of data anymore. We now pay 
no, $150. This is what my kids now love for 2,000 megabytes, two terabytes of information. So when the kids come home from boarding school, no longer have they hijacked dad's phone, mum's phone, the farm business's data, and there's nothing left, and we're under one megabyte a second, we're doing kilobytes. It doesn't, it's like watching paint dry. I actually came home last weekend, first time the kids have been home since I'd put the network in for their exit weekend. Corny came in and said, Dad, on my phone is this Blyley Farms wireless network. What's that all about? Can I please have the password? <laughs> <laughs> Mum, Netflix is available. <laughs> so that was really exciting. I was very lucky to go to a private school in Perth and uh, the kids just don't realise it. They, just, they get data for free. But our kids do it and rural and remote kids understand that you know, it's, uh, it is very hard to get. But when you do get it, it's back like being back in the city. So now that's our complete network. We have some cameras, we have two complete weather stations, we have 10 moisture probes, we have 10 rain buckets. We have a monitor bore network, we can turn taps on, tanks off. Um, it's all coming together, it's been four or five years of work. But it's really quite satisfying now that I can actually go in my phone, turn it on, and see what's actually happening on farm. The top of the farm to the bottom is about 20 kilometres and the width is about 10 to 12. So that's the sort of area that we've, we've covered off on. We will have, when we finish, three 20 metre towers that actually distribute and um, link into the backbone, backbone of, the, uh, of the network. So farm Wi-Fi. It's business grade Wi-Fi, indoor and outdoor. It's our own private network. We don't have any subscription charges. We have sector antennas covering paddocks. We have point-to-point -point connections that create the core or the backbone. We have utes, connectivity in the dashboard, our own private farm cloud. It basically is all suddenly starting to come together. So on the left is a paddock station. There's an actually wire that goes out into the um, cable that goes out into the paddock. Cables and Tine cedars don't mix. Make sure you dig nice big holes. They can go over and with RTK and guidance, make sure you set your moisture probe between the rows, not on the rows. Um, we're now moving to a point where we go Wi-Fi, well not Wi-Fi, what's the word I'm looking for? Wireless, wireless moisture probes. It's funny, I couldn't work out why we weren't getting any readings from our major, major weather station and the uh, cable went out into the paddock and I diligently, under our integrated weed management system, windrowed all that canola and did all the right things and went and had a look at some information and couldn't work out why it wasn't working. Lo and behold, the boys hadn't actually buried the cable and I'd lit up the windrows. And guess what? The windrows went across the cable and right across the top of my moisture probe, hence melted the top. Um, so little things you live and learn by. The brains, the farm server, we have our own intranet, and that's what gives us the ability to have our own private network. I have an application on my phone, I can actually link in back into my own private network with a little button I just press, connect, and suddenly I'm back onto my own farm server. We did a little test outside a minute ago. We got an upload speed of 78 megabytes per second a download, sorry, a download speed of 78 and an upload speed of 45 megabytes a second. And it all comes back to the backhaul where the actual is linking through. And we had a ping of 21 milliseconds, so that was pretty good. In addition to that, we've designed our own dashboards. The phonology of the plants are on the left and our rainfall collects all the data. Water tanks on and off, as I said before. And it's amazing what you can actually do with um, artificial link to technology. I've been very lucky to link up with a company called Crop Manager, and through their artificial intelligence, can actually extrapolate the data from our moisture probes and tell me when a plant becomes under stress. As a grower, you like to make confident decisions. 
the analogy I draw, I said to my wife the other day, did you put any fuel in the Land Cruiser? She said, yeah. The actual fuel tank gauge in the vehicle it's not, doesn't read very well. It's, it's on and off. I said, but if, as long as we know we filled it up, it'll do 1,100 kilometres. I said to Steph, did you fill the, uh, the tank? Yeah, I'll put fuel in it. Did you fill it? Yeah, I'll put fuel in it. So I had this uncanny feeling if she's put fuel in it, and I can't read how much is in the gauge, are we going to get 1,100 kilometres or are we going to get 500? Um, my idea of full and Steph's idea of full sometimes are a little bit different. But whether, whether uh, as a grower, if I can look into my moisture or soil profile, I can make decisions as far as applications. And getting back to value propositions, the year that I got involved with this, I was umming and ahhing whether to apply urea. It's 250 tonne in the shed, and I thought phenology is here. I know what my background is as far as um, nutrients in the soil, chance of getting another rain, everything else. No, I'm going to, and the potential of the crop. We might get two tonnes if we're lucky. I'm going to make a position. We'll keep the urea in the shed. 250 tonne at $500 a tonne, I've suddenly paid for my whole network. So that was, another, that was the kicker for me that I think we're on the right track. I also talked about open technologies. Open technology creates interoperability. And the little box there on your left, we can actually put it inside a, a John Deere um, tractor an older one with a CAN bus system. And say for our headers, the girls are responsible for filling up the headers at harvest. We can now get that little box and the way we program things to send Steph and Lorraine a message. Headers will require fueling in an hour's time. No excuses. <laughs> but on the other side, they don't have to get there really early in the morning before all the boys start and fill up. So little things like that. Um, it can send you phone messages that oil is due changing in another 40 hours. Um, all those sort of things. Health, occupational health and safety. We can turn fans on, turn fans off on our silos at home. Um, it really is quite astonishing. Have an idea, talk to a good programmer. If you've got connectivity, you can make it happen. The artificial intelligence is something that is really going to go ahead in, in future years. Because we've got industrial strength, or what I call business strength, Wi-Fi networks, we've been approached by a company to run an autonomous paddock. Driverless tractors are a reality, and so are sprayers. So simply making better decisions might allow me better time management. It gets rid of my duplication of process. A good thing, it can make me more money. It allows me confidence in my decisions and certainly allows me more time to do, to do the things that I really do enjoy. And that's spending time with family, seeing my kids play sport, going out fishing, and generally taking a little bit of time out. And for those that are on the Twitter sphere, my handle is DKL Racing, and that's another story in itself. I had nothing to do with racehorses a number of years ago, and the only way to get access to all my mates in the syndicate was to follow them on Twitter. Contrary to my wife's dismiss, but she found out on a good day because that was the day that the horse won and paid a healthy $35 the win and 15 bucks the place. The hard part was explaining to her why all my mates knew about it, but she didn't. <laughs> Thank you very much.